OK. Hello everyone and welcome to this breakout session on COVID-19 mental health and employment. Thank you so much for choosing this breakout session to join today. My name is Olivia and I'm communications at the South London and Maudsley and I will be the producer today. Um, we have an excellent uh, panel today and I know they'd all like to introduce themselves. So I'm going to go to uh, Chris Beth first. Chris, hand over to you now. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm Councillor Chris Best. I'm the Deputy Mayor of Lewisham and Cabinet Member for Health and Adult Social Care. Lovely. And, um, I, and I'll hand over to Ed now. Hi, good afternoon everyone. My name's uh, Councillor Ed Davey. I am the Cabinet Mayor in Lambeth Council for Children and Young People. I'm also the Communities Lead for the Mental Health Foundation charity and I'm also on the Council of Governors at SLAM, among other things. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ed. And over to Jane Hughes. Hello, everyone. I'm Jane Hughes. I'm Chief Executive for Mental Health Matters, and I'm here today representing Positive Practice in Mental Health Collaborative. And thank you very much, Jane. And over to Trudy. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Trudy Senevaratna, and I'm a Clinical Director uh, for Psychological Medicine and Lewisham at SLAM. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Trudy. And I'm going to hand, hand over to uh, Janessi now. Um, Janessi, if you'd like to introduce yourself and um, and then tell us your story. You're currently on mute, so if you just unmute yourself. Uh, perfect. I'll send you live now. OK, Janessi, can you hear us? OK, you're currently on mute, Janessi, so if you could just unmute yourself. Let's have a little look. Just got a bit of a problem with some co a connective problem there. What I'm going to do while we're waiting for uh, Janessi is I'm just going to uh, talk to Trudy first. Um, Trudy, I'm going to go live to you now, and I'd just like to um, to to ask you a bit generally. What do you, what do you think the impact on um, what do you think the impact on mental health is going to be if people lose their jobs around this time? Yeah, thank you, Olivia. So, you know, we've heard some great speakers already, haven't we? Um, and I guess the well, there are so many factors that feed into our mental well-being and uh, our mental health or mental illness even. And certainly un unemployment and uh, the, the spin off from that, which is financial uh, hardship, poverty, housing problems. Um, actually, unemployment is one of the significant social factors uh, that we know impact on our mental health. So it's, it's really, really important. So, you know, we've seen that uh, there are many more, you know, millions more people applying for universal credit. Um, there are more people unemployed at the moment. There's a prediction that there is going to be a high rate of unemployment as we move forward over the next couple of months. Um, so it's, I guess it's really worrying. So the impact of losing, you know, losing a job if, if somebody had one in the first place, uh, the insecurity of perhaps losing a job um, is enormous and it can cause stress, it can cause anxiety, depression, you know, there are worse consequences of that. There are perhaps, you know, also subtle, you know, lower level things like loss of identity maybe or not being appreciated, feeling angry and scared and uh, worried, you know, for oneself and the family. So it, it, it's one of, you know, Maslow's basic hierarchy of needs, not having employment, you know, affects our, our basic needs, really. And so it's 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 really important. So we need to think about how we can support, you know, our mental health um, and our well-being as, as part of this, as, as we've heard. Thank you very much, Trudy. And I think we've managed to get Janessi back now. So Janessi, I'm going to hand over to you. And if you um, unmute your microphone, we'll be able to hear you. And um, Janessi, great. And Janessi is going to tell us her story and explain a little bit about what's happened to her. Janessi, can you hear me? 
Can you unmute your microphone? I am. I am. Great. I think we can yes, hear you now, Jennifer. Okay. Perfect. We can hear you. Are you happy to tell us your story? Yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Janacy. Um, I am part of uh, Parents and Communities Together and with Citizen UK. Um, I am a mother of three. Um, um, I am a mother of three. I'm from Cuba. I've uh, been in the country for 15 years. Um, um, obviously, I was working. I started a new job in December because um, I am a carer, but um, because I go back to Ireland, so I started a new job in December. And then, well, with this situation, everything stopped. Um, I'm really a single mom with three children. I don't really have any more income apart from universal credit. So COVID have affected me very badly and emotionally, mentally, I mean, physically, financially, in all of the way. And uh, the children, the kid is uh, their home. So they don't understand why they're off school. They don't understand why they can't go back to school. They don't understand what is COVID mean. You explain to them because the one that the little one, she's six year, and then obviously she misses school, she misses her friend, she misses her teacher, and it's extra stress on top of all of the stress that we normally go through life day by day. Um, but it's really affect my job very badly because it really means that that is everything for me. I go a fee to pay for the home office, two thousand one hundred pounds that I had to ask someone to borrow to me because I didn't have the money. So now that I got this new job, everything is is collapsed, it's no jobs. And so I really will appreciate if if you can listen to us and um, well to me because it's not just me on this situation it's million of people it's a lot of people outside there with the same situation and then i would really will appreciate if you can work together with us if you can listen to our story and please i really will appreciate Thank you very much, Janessi. It sounds thank like you've you. had a, a difficult time. Um, and thank you so much for your contribution and telling us about what you've been through. Uh, it sounds like you've, you've had a, you've had a struggle. Um, Ed, I'd like to bring you in here and uh, and to ask you about what what you think. Um, I mean, we've you've heard Janessi's story. Um, do you think this is going to be happening to a lot of people around around Lambeth and around the uh, Alfall boroughs? Yeah, absolutely. I think the the story that Janessi told uh, told just now very eloquently um, is something that I recognise from a lots of our constituents, um, not just in Lambeth, but I'm sure across all four boroughs that SLAM serves. Um, we, as it was in Lambeth, and I'm sure the figures are similar for the other boroughs, we had 42% of our children uh, live in poverty in Lambeth. And many of those children, their parents are in work. So even in work, poverty has become a much greater problem in recent years. Um, and I think, um, as we heard from Harriet Harman, the problems that we had before coronavirus have, have been compounded and made worse by coronavirus, uh, particularly around um, unemployment and um, kind of in work poverty, as I say. So I think I think that situation have got worse um, for many people and it's imperative we do everything we can to support people like uh, Janessi and others who are in in that situation. You're on mute Olivia. I knew that would happen to me one day. Um, thank you Ed for that and uh, what we really want to achieve today and uh, again thank you to everyone that's joining us 
um, we uh, we'd like to examine what, what our audience think the impact of COVID-19 will be on employment and what will be the impact on our community's mental health. And I can see that a few of you have already left some comments here. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and I'll pick, pick this one up and I'll put it to you, uh, Councillor Chris Best. Um, Carol Stevens has said, um, I think there's going to be a huge pressure on the job market. Will the health and social care services have the funding to increase their recruitment and maybe a bit of positive discrimination for people with mental health issues? Chris, what do you think to that? Oh, thanks very much. Um, very, very good point to make. Let me just uh, also say about the rising claimant numbers, because I think we're we're quite keen to gather data. And as Ed said, uh, in Lewisham, our claimant count has gone up by over a half from eight and a half thousand um, in uh, March to 15,000. So it's been the highest claim count in Lewisham since July 1997. So we've got real challenges here and it is very much about how we can support people back into work. And so we do have a number of initiatives. Um, we've had a hardship fund, but um, we've got a Lewisham Backs Business Fund. So that's where we really want to help people work with employers and particularly care homes, of course, because we have been supporting them um, with extra funding. Um, they'll have a number of empty beds, but they'll also have vacancies for staff. So we've been giving extra funds to make sure that they're up to the level. So there are opportunities out there. But what we also want to do is make sure that our high streets can revitalise. So we're working with businesses that can reopen to take on uh, people who aren't working, particularly with mental health, to train up and to make sure there are sustainable jobs. Um, we want to make sure that um, through our discretionary fund, um, we've been giving out grants uh, plus the government funding. So at this point in time, uh, Lewisham's awarded £37 million to nearly 3,000 businesses. So we want to put real cash out there to keep businesses going because we know they're, they're the employers and there are many small businesses in Lewisham. It's one of the, um, the highest number in London of small uh, and medium enterprise businesses, um, particularly students coming out of Goldsmiths who set up locally. So lots of opportunities and that's why both in the caring sector and we've uh, we had the highest take up of proud to care people who wanted to join that. But we want to make sure there are those opportunities. So I fully agree with the question. Local authorities, a real role to play in backing business. Thank you very much, Councillor Chris Besser. Um, I've got a question that I'd like to put to Jane at the moment. And if anyone has anything they'd like to add to, please, please do uh, come in on that. And um, Jane, Philippa has has shared her story here. She said she spent a year looking for work and she's uh, severely and enduringly mental, mentally ill. She said she's been doing some involvement register work with SLAM. She lives on benefit, she lives alone, and she's not able to do the basic involvement register things. Um, is that situation of people living alone and living on benefits something that you're quite familiar with? It is yes I think most provider organisations will be familiar with working with people in this situation. I think the challenge that we, we face going forward is that we're also going to see people who potentially have not been particularly impacted in terms of unemployment in the past affecting their uh, mental health and I think there, there are two aspects that we need to consider in terms of working together collaboratively to, to find solutions to this. One is supporting those people who, um, as a Philippa, have been in a situation where they have enduring mental illness and um, ensuring that there are opportunities and the right support for them as we move forward. And also recognising that there will be other people who have become perhaps unemployed for the first time. Um, and equally between that and the isolation they've been experiencing during this time, we'll need support moving forward. And I think the critical thing is to ensure that we have the different types of support available and that we also look in terms of um, the opportunities that, um, that Chris was just talking about then and um, meet the needs of different people. Because I think the other challenge is going to be that because the way some of the businesses will have been affected, we might be having to look at different opportunities for people. So different uh, job opportunities from perhaps what they were looking at previously or employment they've been engaged in before. And that may mean retraining and support for people around that to consider other opportunities. And um, so that's, that's an added challenge. And I think it's absolutely critical that the resource is there to support that training and support people looking at alternative employment. Um, and also bearing in mind that um, the process of potentially 
and um, for those who work part time and are therefore claiming benefits at the same time, ensuring that we are supportive of enabling people to do that and also make those transitions. The critical bit is that the support there is around employment, but also in terms of collaboration with those providing the healthcare support and um, that work together in terms of enabling people to, to get into employment and to find the right opportunities. And finally, I think the critical thing that I would also add for some is we have to remember that we will also still need to have volunteering opportunities for people who are further from the labour market and not at the point yet where they're ready in terms of skills or confidence or self-esteem to, to go into paid employment. So we need to be mindful of that as well, that all those opportunities will need to continue to be made available to support people back into work. Thank you very much. Jane. Does anyone from the panel want to come in on that point at all? No, that's fine. There's an there's a very uh, there's an interesting comment here, and thank, yeah, thank you again you. to everyone who's who's joined. Um, Trudy, did you want to come in on that? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Olivia, I was on mute. I was sort of saying yes, I'll make a, a comment <laughs> to that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the question of volunteering, for example, is really important because, um, as we just said, there are sort of two cohorts of people, if you like, when we're thinking of people with mental health issues. There, there, there may be people who develop mental health problems because of unemployment and. Uh, all the other sort of social factors as a result of COVID. But then, you know, there's also a group of people who perhaps have had mental health issues already, some of whom may be in employment, and also others who are currently not in employment. I mean, I've been thinking really carefully about, and lots of others about actually, as a provider, what could SLAM do to collaborate more, both in terms of the recovery from COVID, but also bringing together some of the other um, tools that we have. So uh, Jackie mentioned the uh, NHS long term plan, for example, which is very much about working in partnership uh, at a local level about facilitating uh, health and care, social care partnerships, but also within the local communities in helping um, areas like it, employment. So what could we do there? And also what could SLAM offer in terms of volunteering opportunities, more apprentice uh, ships that again are being provided, but there's there's much more of that in sort of bulking up the employment opportunities um, that might be available across um, the four boroughs. Absolutely, thank you so much, Judy. And I know Ed um, has 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 got done some work in Lambeth, and it would be interesting to hear from you on that, Ed, about what's been going on there. Yeah, so obviously this summit. Is, is about prevention and whilst it's really important to support people with existing mental health conditions and I include myself in that in the uh, after the 2008 economic crash which uh, probably similar to what we're experiencing now I kind of hit rock bo bottom in my pre-existing uh, problem drinking and I ended up as a patient of South London and the Maudsley in the addiction centre in Brixton the Lorraine Hew Hewitt house um, and I had a really good experience of services and um, it will be 11 years in July that I haven't had a drink um, and that was I mean I like to say it was a pre-existing problem um, but it didn't help that I was made redundant so I really sympathize and and have some insight into what it's like to be in that kind of situation where you lose your job and existing problems are exacerbated um, so so because we're talking about prevention primarily I'm really interested in in what NH, our local NHS trusts as employers and procurers of services and goods locally can do more of in terms of uh, employing people, training people, giving them voluntary uh, opportunities, giving them work experience. Um, and, and we managed to support South London and the Maudsley and Guys and St Thomas's um, NHS Trust to become London Living Wage accredited employers in February. And King's College Hospital have also agreed to do that, which means we're lifting hundreds of local residents who work as cleaners and security guards and other other contracted um, jobs out of poverty, getting a 100 week pay rise if they were on the government's minimum wage before. And that has a direct effect on their health and well-being uh, just because they're lifted out of poverty. So we want to do, do more of that and we want to work with our NHS trust to make sure they're maxing out the opportunity to support local businesses and local agencies and, and, and other groups and some of those are specifically working with 
South London and Maudsley service users. So there's a, a social enterprise called Recover, which is like a decorating company that Lambeth Council um, uh, commissions to decorate some of our properties and they do a fantastic job and that gives South London and the Maudsley service users an opportunity to train and, and earn a living um, and, and supports them on their recovery. So I think there's loads of opportunities. Um, I looked up SLAM's budget. The annual budget is £406 million a year. Now combined with our other teaching hospitals and universities and councils, that's an enormous amount of money we could be spending more of in the local economy to support more job uh, training opportunities. I just give one tiny more example. Sorry, I know I've gone on for long enough, but we have a scheme um, in the council um, called Takeover Challenge, where we get local school children, secondary school children, come into the town hall and the NHS and sort of shadow us for a day. And I remember taking one um, secondary school pupil from the Loughborough estate, very deprived area, to um, to the Lorraine Hewitt house where she met the leading psychiatrist, Dr. Mike Kelleher. And by the end of a 20 minute conversation with him, she was she wanted to be a psychiatrist. She was going to study <laughs> medicine and she'd never even it never even occurred to her before because she'd never met a doctor before, apart from going to the GP. And, and so if we give our young people opportunities like that to actually realise that these are jobs and professions that they could get into, then, then we can make a huge difference to our local communities and fill all of those NHS vacancies of which we have hundreds locally and that will get worse probably with Brexit as we lose some of our skilled workers. Well, let's replace them with some of our local people uh, if we give them the opportunity. Thank you very much, Ed. That's, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing your story as well. Um, does anyone from the panel want to come in on that? No, um, thank you. Uh, someone called Stephanie has left a great message here, which really fits in with the questions we've asked. Stephanie's um, said, uh, our priority needs to be how providers, particularly in the statutory sector, can influence their own employers and other employers to ensure people with mental health problems have equal access to the posts they're seeking to fill. We need to get Job Centre Plus on board. So it's about uh, so it, it's about really making sure that there's equal access to these to these jobs. Um, Chris, would you like to come in on that at all? Oh, sorry, Chris, you're on mute. OK, yes, getting used to uh, new technology, which again will be uh, other opportunities for people that we were talking about retraining. So I think um, a whole virtual side is uh, opens itself up and uh, certainly support in the background. But in terms of, um, I think, Job Centre Plus, making sure again, they have training opportunities and we must make sure they are appropriately funded. Um, as Harriet was saying earlier, it's about resources. You know, there there was lots we were doing before COVID and it seems to me there's far more we must now put in place. And I think making sure that people are skilled and that there's an empathy in the job centres that they get the, you know, it's just been for some people a really terrible experience to have been in lockdown for 12 weeks. You know, and, and particularly if you're social isolating, uh, if you're shielding, because there's another cohort there that um, I think will be quite vulnerable that we also need to cater for and give support to. So, yeah, I think a lot of training needs to take place with um, the appropriateness of placements and a little bit more time and care taken over that, that, you know, it's um, it can never be business as usual going forward. Thank you very much, Councillor Chris Best. And um, we, we don't have very long. Unfortunately, we could we could do, really do with another half an hour, but we have to rejoin our, our main broadcast in, in just about four minutes. But before we do, I'd like to go to uh, Janessi again, if, if that's OK, Janessi, and just to just to really find out how you found the lockdown period. I think you might be on mute, Janessi. Don't worry, Janessi. I think we're not gonna. We're, we're probably gonna have a bit of difficulty getting there with you, um, with 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 the microphone. Um, but but what I'd like to do instead is is actually just uh, go to to Jane for uh, her thoughts on what we think, what she thinks our priority is going to be going forward. Um, so what what do you think, Jane, is our top priority that we need to work on together over the next 12 months? I'm putting you on the spot here. 
<laughs> That's fine. Uh, and linking actually to the question that you just asked, Janessi, I think we're going back to the fact that we recognise the need to be different opportunities because the needs of people are going to be different. And I think some of that is going to be the experience of coming out of this crisis and being in lockdown and the way that will have affected different individuals. Um, I think we need to recognise for people who are in employment and returning to employment or who get into employment, many of those are going to need support to remain in employment and also support um, in terms of their mental health and in having the confidence to, to move forward in, in seeking employment. I think the critical bit for me is ensuring that in terms of supporting recovery of people in this situation, there needs to be really close working with, with the health professionals who are supporting people with their mental health and their recovery and treatment, with the um, services that are providing support in gaining employment and then maintaining that employment. I think it's absolutely critical, as well as having the resources, that we work in that collaborative way to enable people to um, secure employment and remain in that. And similarly, link back to what Trudy was saying around the volunteering opportunities. We need to think across the breadth of the piece that will enable people to get back into employment, whatever their circumstances have been at the starting point of this. Trudy, did you want to come in on that? Yeah, I feel so passionately about that, actually. I just don't think we have enough of those sorts of opportunities locally. And it's brilliant to hear that, you know, there's lots, <laughs> lots going on that we've just heard. But I think we could really work together to find lots, you know, more new solutions around this. So, you know, it's... A, it is an opportunity. People talk about silver linings around COVID, don't they, all the time? But uh, this this is possibly a silver moment opportunity, silver lining opportunity, where we can really think about different opportunities for our local population to sort of offer something differently, certainly in relation to employment and, and mental health. Thank you so Thank you much. So um, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap up here. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to uh, to Janessi for coming on. I don't know if she can hear me. We're having some technical problems. Um, and thank you to um, all of you who've joined this conversation. And we'll be making this public and available for you all to see. And thank you so much to all of you who've published your your stories and your experiences and uh, and your suggestions in the Q and A function. It's really really great to 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 see those. Um, my colleague Danielle has posted the link back to the main summit now in this in this uh, Q and A function. Um, it's the first link that you joined when you joined the first summit i know it's quite confusing but please do bear with us um, and we'll rejoin you back in the main summit again so thank you so much to all of our panel and thank you so much to you all for joining us and um and for discussing for discussing covid 19 mental health and employment and we'll see you we'll see you back again in in the other session thank you all and i'll end this broadcast now thank you